Welcome back everybody to Gemology for Schmucks. Once again, my name is Peter Nelson and I'm here to tell you everything you need to know about gemstones. Last week we talked about the Schiller phenomenon, which is when light interacts with different layers inside of stones like moonstone or labradorite. Today we're going to be talking about another phenomenon, and in case it's not completely clear, a phenomenon is what happens when light interacts with certain gemstones. It's a special effect. Today, the phenomenon that we're going to be talking about is called iridescence. Iridescence in its strictest sense is what happens in stones like fire agate. From this distance, it may just look like a brown stone, but when you get up close, you can see as the stone is moved around that there are all sorts of vibrant colors, a lot like what you would find in an oil slick on the side of the road. And that's not just a coincidence. The mechanism in nature that creates it in fire agate, as well as in the oil slick, is the same. It's something called interference. Interference is when light goes into a substance, usually a thin film, or perhaps it's different minerals that are in thin layers, and the way that light is absorbed inside of those layers and then gets reflected back is what shows us these colors. Especially if those layers are different thicknesses, you have to keep in mind that when light travels, it seems white to us, but that's all of the colors combined. Once light goes into an optically denser material like stone or crystal, or water even, it slows down because light moves slower in those substances than it does in air. The red wavelength and the violet wavelength and everything in between will move at different speeds because their wavelengths are a different size. And so depending on the different layers that it has to pass through, light's going to be absorbed at a different speed and it's going to come back as different colors to our eye. And that's what we call iridescence. Now, how does it happen in some gemstones and not in others? Well, in agate, what happens is it's very, very tiny crystals of quartz. This type of quartz called chalcedonia or agate, when it's pulled out of the earth, it can look like clusters of grapes. So as these tiny crystals, and I'm talking so tiny you can't even see them with your eye, even under the high magnification of a normal gemological microscope, you cannot see them. But you will see the formation of these bubble structures. So other minerals will actually get inside as impurities. And when those other mineral impurities get along that bubble structure, it will create that interference that we were talking about. And that's what leads to iridescence. Iridescence is this phenomenon of color and that color will change from a different viewing angle. So from this direction you might get red, from that direction you might get green or blue. And a lot of you are very clever, and so many people were asking me last week, well this sounds a lot like what I see in opal, and you're absolutely right. In opal we have a different name for it though, but the mechanism is almost the same. The colors are created by interference, but we don't call it iridescence. Now why not? It's not iridescence because the structure is different. So interference is causing the color but the structure that causes the color inside of opal are actually tiny spheres of silica gel. So way back in the day, there were ancient oceans all over the place. And naturally, as water does, it goes down to the lowest point, right? And that carries with it other sorts of minerals. So when silica gets dissolved in certain other things, it can kind of collect in these low points. So opal is actually transported to these locations as just a liquid substance. And as the years go by, the oceans disappear. So these silica spheres are actually kind of like a gel. And then over time, they solidify and turn into a stone. If those silica spheres are similar enough size and they line up into the correct order, they will create what we call play of color. Opal itself is just a mineral, but the play of color is caused by the lining up of those silica gel spheres. Not all opals have the play of color phenomenon. Some of them are just like this. It just looks like a bluish green stone, because it is. But it is also opal. It has all of the same identifiable features as other opals, but it does not have the play of color phenomenon. It's still made of the same stuff, but because those silica gel spheres did not line up correctly, that's why we don't see any play of color in this stone. Whereas in stones like this, the silica spheres lined up so well that you see play of color over all parts of the stone. And you have a wide variety of colors as well. You've got the reds, the greens, the yellows, very little blue in this one, and that's just caused by the size of the silica gel spheres. So when you're buying opals, paying attention to what colors are present in the stone, as well as how nice the play of color is, will affect the price of the stone. So if you look at this black opal, you will see that there's quite a bit of red, as well as green, and certain directions you'll also get blue. So because we have that whole spectrum of colors, this stone is quite a bit more valuable than some of these others, like this boulder opal. In this one, there's only very limited colors, and they're limited to very small veins within the mother rock. Also cool, 
but much more common. Let's review a little bit. Today we've been talking about iridescence, which happens in fire agate, and we've also been talking about play of color, which happens in opals. These are both caused by the same general mechanism called interference, which is when light passes from one substance into another substance. And because of the difference of the speeds of the red ray and the violet ray and everything else in between, when it gets reflected back up to our eye, we see different spectral colors. The colors that we see will depend on what angle we view that stone from. So iridescence happens in fire agate, play of color happens in opal. The play of color that happens in opal happens because of very well-placed silica gel spheres. And if they are lined up correctly, we get the play of color effect. The size of the silica gel spheres affects what colors that we see. And that's all I've got for this week's episode of Gemology for Schmucks. Once again, if you like this video, hit like. If you aren't subscribed yet, you should be. And you should also be telling all of your friends about it. And until next week, I will say bye-bye.